Hello, I'm Tad Brown, President of the Watson Brown Foundation, the external funder of the Sims Initiatives, a digital humanities project of the University of South Carolina Libraries. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of Sims's ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it is part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam in the Cabin. When we last left off, James Grayling, following the instructions of the ghost, successfully led the authorities to the dense swamp bottom where the remains of the murdered Major Spencer were finally discovered. The examination of the body proceeds now in part 19 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, or Murder Will Out. The head was very much disfigured. The skull was fractured in several places by repeated blows of some hard instrument, inflicted chiefly from behind. A closer inspection revealed a bullet hole in the abdomen, the first wound, in all probability, which the unfortunate gentleman received, and by which he was, perhaps, tumbled from his horse. The blows on the head would seem to have been unnecessary, unless the murderer, whose proceedings appeared to have been singularly deliberate, was resolved upon making assurance doubly sure. But, as if the watchful providence had meant that nothing should be left doubtful, which might tend to complete conviction of the criminal, the constable stumbled upon the butt of the broken pistol, which had been found in McLeod's trunk. This he picked up on the edge of the pond in which the course had been discovered, and while James Grayling and his uncle Sparkman were engaged in drawing it from the water. The place where the fragment was discovered at once denoted the pistol as the instrument by which the final blows were inflicted. For God, said the judge to the criminal, as these proofs were submitted on the trial, you may be a very innocent man after all, as, by my faith, I do think there have been many murders before you, but you ought, nevertheless, to be hung as an example to all other persons who suffer such strong proofs of guilt to follow their innocent misdoings. Gentlemen of the jury, if this person, McLeod or McNabb, didn't murder, murder Major Spencer, either you or I did, and you must now decide which of us it is. I say, gentlemen of the jury, either you or I or the prisoner at the bar murdered this man, and if you have any doubts which of us it, is, it was, it is but justice and mercy that you should give the prisoner the benefit of your doubts, and so find your verdict. But before God should you find him not guilty, Mr. Attorney there can scarcely do anything wiser than to put us all upon trial for the deed. The jury it may be scarcely necessary to add, perhaps under certain becoming fears of an alternative such as his honor had suggested, brought in a verdict of guilty without leaving the panel, and McNabb, alias McLeod, was hung at White Point, Charleston, somewhere about the year 1783. And here, said my grandmother devoutly, you behold a proof of God's watchfulness to see that murder should not be hidden and that the murderer should not escape. You see that he sent the spirit of the murdered man, since by no other mode could the truth have been revealed, to declare the crime and to discover the criminal. But for that ghost, McNabb would have got off to Scotland and probably had been living to this very day on the money that he took from the person of the poor major. This has been part 19 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this gothic tale. If you would like to read the full text of this story, or any of the other many works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, Happy Halloween!